Hello and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues, a conversation of ideas. This evening, censorship and democracy, that's our focus. Are these two concepts mutually contradictory? Or indeed, is censorship in some form absolutely necessary to ensure the safe functioning of our democracy? Is this to be used in the rarest of rare cases? Or the more cuts, the better? Joining me for more on this, I'm joined by Kiran Nagarkar. He's, of course, a Sahitya Academy winning author. His new book is actually well based on an old theme. It includes Bedtime Story, a play he first wrote in the 1970s. At that time, he faced 78 cuts from the censors for the play. It's releasing now, finally, for the first time in print, and it's perhaps more timely than ever. I'm also joined by Professor Dipankar Gupta, a professor at the Shivnadar University. Also with me, Leela Sampson, former head of the censor board. Also with me are two members of the present censor board. I'm joined by Vani Tripathi Tikku of the BJP and also Ashok Pandit, filmmaker. Also with me is actor and activist Shabana Azmi. Shabana Azmi, if I could begin with you, censorship and democracy. Do you find the concept contradictory, as I asked in my introduction, or do you think that in some form it's absolutely essential? Well, I think first, if we went around addressing the term correctly, it would bring a lot of clarity. It isn't really the censor board, but the board of film certification in the case of films. Its business is not to censor, but to certify according to age appropriate uh, levels. That's the main thing. Now, whereas we all um, are very proud of the fact that uh, freedom of speech is a very important tenet of democracy, I believe that there is no such thing as absolute in uh, freedom. And even within our constitution, you talk about reasonable restrictions. So I think that it is very important for a society to have within themselves mechanisms that they themselves have agreed upon as to what is appropriate and what is not only according to levels. I have a problem with the way the film certification board is constituted in India because you have one head and then you have 30 odd people from various strata of society that have most certainly been picked up by the political dispensation of the day. And so what you're actually doing is subjecting the morality of the country to the political dispensation of the day every five years. Now this I find completely unacceptable. What I think is if we would follow the US method, whereby filmmakers themselves have their own body, where a filmmaker decides, I do not want a single cut in my film, but I accept that it is not appropriate for children. I, I accept that it is very violent. So I will accept triple X. Or the filmmaker will say, no, I am voluntarily agreeing to these cuts because I want younger people also to watch it. Mm -hmm. But it is within the uh, industry themselves that they come up with this. And that, I think, is the healthiest way of looking at it. I'm going to go into the film aspect specifically, but uh, just to point out that this dialogue, I wanted to broaden the theme of censorship as well. And of course, uh, Kirin Nagarkar uh, with us in studio tonight. And Mr. Nagarkar, this issue of censorship and freedom of expression, let's take it beyond the censor board, or the film certification board, or what we can see in films, but censorship in our lives is censorship, self-censorship in thinking, what is acceptable to be, uh, to even come out in society, in a debate, in a dialogue. Do you think that's a larger issue we need to face, not just now, but this is a problem that Indian society has grappled with for years. So you made the point of, of course, Bedtime Story first, uh, written in the 1970s, just after emergency. And uh, the censors gave you 78 cuts. Yeah, um, some kind of record. I hope um, it's not going to be beaten ever. <laughs> but um, I think the larger context is what matters enormously. I was just thinking, uh, going back a few years, do you remember the controversy about those cartoons mm -hmm. that uh, from Shankar's Weekly? <laughs> I mean, Nehru and Ambedkar had seen those cartoons, I think, uh, at some point in time, Nehru must have said, oh my God, this is real fun, it's about me. <laughs> because he was quite capable of that kind of thing, and I suspect it must have been the same with Ambedkar. But it was all right at that time, and then God knows how many years later, I mean, four decades later, it's suddenly not all right. 
So I think amongst the various things that I, perhaps we can look at today is the factor of what kinds of things bring this feeling that we are not safe, we need to be safeguarded from humor, from acute satire. And I think the very first thing that perhaps we should look at is this competitive nature that censorship has entered. Mm -hmm. That if the Hindu community says, no, no, this PK won't do for us at all, a certain segment of it, not all entire, then perhaps the Christians feel, oh, uh, La da Vinci Code has to be contested, not mm -hmm. because there's any problem with it, but we have to um, earn our stars and prove that we also matter. And the matter. Charlie Hebdo cartoons. Absolutely, yes. It, it just goes on and on. And I mean, and the Muslims will do that. This is a very sad thing, and I, but I still see them as symptoms, and I'm trying to figure out what in God's name is the root cause. And I hope to God we are going to come up with some solutions today. It's interesting you said in God's name because perhaps I'm in God. <laughs> yeah, is, is that the root cause, uh, Professor Gupta? Because then I actually rephrase: it's not about Indian society; it's a churn we're seeing across the world. Whether it's Charlie Hebdo, whether it's about, of course, interestingly, the High Court in uh, Calcutta gave compensation to Professor who'd been arrested for uh, after circulating a cartoon of Mamta Banerjee. It's a larger battle of forces, whether you call it progressive, conservative, or whether it's a new progressive who wears his conservatism on his sleeve. Well, you see, I think uh, a lot of this is lazy politics, really, uh, because you want to preempt any possible attacks on you. Uh, and censorship has become somewhat like reservations. It's just grown and grown and grown. And uh, nobody wants to really bell the cat. Uh, I think that s there's no society in the world which doesn't have some sense of what is right and wrong, ultimately. Because even in our constitution, the, the right to freedom is f expressed first. And then there are some reservations mentioned. I'm surprised sovereignty comes up again and again, threat to sovereignty. That is a problem that we have. It doesn't, it's not something that most other developed democracies have. But we keep thinking about sovereignty will be, will be undermined by this act or that book, you know, And that came in later, 1951. So yeah. initially, the yeah. freedom was more absolute. Yeah, so you know, in, in the Indian constitution, for example, uh, every, uh, every article has so many amendments to it. <laughs> So you don't quite know whether the father of the, the founders of the constitution are really being respected because you have so many amendments, you know, over a hundred now. So obviously we don't think too much about the founders of the constitution. We salute them just uh, symbolically. The point really is this, that, you know, you cannot have a system by which you can tick boxes. Tick box censorship does not work. Uh, every democracy is a deliberative act. You have to think things through. There's no straightforward answer to anything. Only thing you they must keep in mind that ultimately you have to actually protect freedom of expression. And under very, very dire circumstances, you might think of controlling this or that. For example, hate speech. There's so much controversy over it. What is hate speech? Is the speech itself bad? Or is provocation bad? Advocacy bad? <clears throat> so there are various ways of looking at it. Book banning again. In America, books are banned because of sexual content. In India, books are banned because of communal content. But you know, other countries have graduated and moved on. We seem to be sliding backwards. So, is it about the maturity of a democracy also? Avani, to come in, because you've, you've seen both sides. You were a theater activist first, and now I'm sure you're facing lots of flack from your friends from that world when you have to now certify them or censor them or decide that words like lesbian can't go or words like... Uh, uh, we just had a controversy this week where, again, Dr. Devedi has written saying that he finds the so-called banned list of 50 curse words is still being uh, used for the new movie NH10, which has just been released. When we look at what certification is not about censorship, so you shouldn't be looking for words to censor. You should just look at what certificate a film needs to get. I think a couple of things we must put in the context in which we are you know, discussing free speech or freedom of expression today. Uh, Sonia, I think it's very important to understand that we've also become over the years, the more than 65 years of our democracy, we've become oversensitive about a couple of things. And the same narrative plays out when you see uh, you know, reactions to plays reactions to cinema, reactions to literature, which is sad. But also we must remember that if I have the right to offend, there is another part of democracy which says I have the right to be offended too. As long as I have the right to protest and I do not incite violence, I mean, that is all fine and it, it's a level playing field. As far as certification is concerned, I totally, I actually disagree with the word censor. 
It was a propaganda word used by the Britishers so long ago, which was about censoring of information and they wanted to keep control on what, you know, people read who were their, uh, you know, uh, colony. So I think it is film certification and ratings. But again, the question is, how mature are we in our democracy today to just handle ratings? For example, you as a mother, would you want a 13-year-old or a 14-year-old or a 16-year-old would, would you like to would you like your child to see a certain kind of cinema which could be realistic i'm totally for free speech i must make it very clear here but portrayals of uh, certain things can look brutal they can have very deep ranging impacts so i think censoring of cinema or rather certification of cinema is not a creative procedure it's a sociological one you should look at what is the impact that particular film cinema is religion in this country what impact will it have and what is the receiving audience? I think that is our business and we should just end it there. I'm just going to bring in Leela Sampson because I think that's an interesting point. Cinema is religion, so it's treated all, or what is said on screen is almost holy. Perhaps that's why that bizarre, that bizarre thing came up, which I know most actors protested very strongly, uh, Leela Sampson, under your time, is that uh, super which comes on. Smoking is injurious to your health at the time when uh, somebody actually smokes on screen. But looking at the broader aspect of censorship or certification. You're in Chennai at a time when a TV channel there has been attacked. Uh, bombs, uh, country-made bombs have been thrown at a channel because they were planning to broadcast a program on the pros and cons of wearing a Mangal Sutra. Those protesting say, why isn't this done for other religions? Why isn't the, why isn't the Parda questioned? But when we look at the environment of censorship beyond films, and of course your personal experience as a member of the censor board when Mumbai when a film was, a music video wasn't allowed to be released because apparently Mumbai was said instead of Bombay. Some of it is ridiculous, some of it is very, very serious. I'd agree with, uh, uh, you know, both Shabana and uh, the other speakers that, you know, our business was only to certify. Uh, it is when panel members, and I repeat, not board members, when panel members who could be uh, uh, the, the people who actually certify films, take it upon themselves to become the moral custodians of, uh, of, in, of the Indian people, that's when the problem starts, when they, when they make a value judgment on the product, rather than just say that this is not appropriate for my child. But I also would like to add here that I don't see why every film must be seen by every Indian. Uh, there, you have a choice to put the switch off. If I don't want the light on, I, I should put it off. I don't want to see a, film, a particular film on, or read a particular book. Mm -hmm. I have the right, I should be sensible enough to not hurt my sentiment and not go for it. Uh, of course, we have to certify and certify appropriately, and it is a sociological problem. Uh, but um, I think we're mixing up many things, uh, you know, because we're such a complex uh, society. Uh, and uh, from so many religious groups and so many language groups, what is uh, good in one language, that very same word in the southern languages becomes a cuss word in uh, the, the other southern language. So when you do these, uh, when, you, when the same film goes between Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala, there, it's quite funny actually what, what does happen to the dialogues. Uh, so we are talking about a, a situation which is very, very delicate. And, um, so this, the I'd ban like on words here, like Mumbai, the ban on words like Mumbai in a film, uh, using no, the, this uh, caption uh, flashing that, up on smoking, uh, why were those uh, cleared? That, why did these? So why are they actually still happening? So, as as an artist, I must tell you that it is so offensive to me that ticker coming on on a on a on a creation, one of my creations. After all, the screen does become. Uh, the, uh, the the you know the drawing board of of, of that artist and uh, to have a ticker going there uh, right in the middle of a uh, of a love scene or whatever a very delicate scene is to me very very offensive uh, so you know these are th this is the problem when the government uh, decides to interfere in uh, the artistic products of uh, that are coming out in the country in any form. Uh, Wendy Doniger's book on Hinduism, or Hussein Saab's uh, uh, The Terrible Way in Which We Treated Him. Uh, all these things are uh, very offensive to me. And I, I'd like to say here also that uh, why is it only cinema or theatre scripts uh, that have to do the rounds of, of, um, of um, being uh, reviewed? 
if you take any of our traditional songs, mm -hmm. any of our traditional sahitya, uh, the poems that were the love poems that were written by Jayadev or uh, Kalidas and all, they're very explicit, but so beautiful. Uh, now, if they had to actually enter this room, it could be that they would find much of it offensive, uh, but, even for children. But children do learn dance, they do learn music, they are appreciating this thing. It's just that when you that's mature a, to a, that's a, an, an age that you point. can appreciate How would that many, poetry. Would, uh, would much of that work of art be lost to us in the age of censors? But Ashok Pandit, please come in because you're a filmmaker as well yourself. And you protested very strongly against this list of uh, curse words which cannot be used, etc. But on the AIB <laughs> roast aspect, and that may be one extreme uh, view, and there are many people who don't necessarily support it. But I think the point Leela Sampson made, and perhaps others have, if you don't like it, don't watch it. I think Karan Johar himself tweeted, if it's not your cup of tea, don't drink it. Many questioned why you, as a member of the Film Certification or Censor Board, came out so strongly, and some would say offensively, against what is a right of an adult Indian to watch or not watch? Um, Sonia, there are two things which yes. I want to really clarify. One is uh, when, when an individual or when uh, an icons of the country uh, whom people follow uh, abuse each other of a language which normally you don't uh, would like to listen to and it's my uh, right to express my opinion as freedom my expression I objected to it but as far as the films are concerned as far as creativity is concerned Sonia there are the characters who talk it's not Karan Johar abusing uh, uh, you know um, uh, uh, Ranbir or whatever it is so when, when, when a filmmaker of, of a country which whom I am also a very big fan when he uses this language I, I get a bit of a shock and I have a right to do that and I just expressed my opinion. I just expressed my 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 my, my uh, action. But this doesn't mean that you uh, you you agree to me or you don't agree to me. And I have a right to do that. Yes, but when know. coming to cinema or books or literature or writer or director or maker, I objected. I objected to the cuss word list. I was the first person to object along with Chandrapakal ji and uh, other other uh, board members also because I feel that when a character, you know, Shamana ji has played such important roles. Vani has played such important roles. When, when, when a character is talking, and if there's a, if, if a character is a dacoit, she, the dacoit cannot talk of a language of a Vivekanand, or a state, or a Vallabhai Patel, or a Gandhi. So, you are taking the right from me of, of, of justifying the character whom I am portraying in the film. Mm -hmm. And one thing very important I want to share with you, Sonia, and other panel members, respected panel members is, that you are in a time where everything is available to you on your computer, on your phone. So, what censorship are we talking about? Problem what happens is when a person who's sitting on the chair and when he's seeing a film, there's a kind of an arrogance and ego which goes into his mind and he starts thinking with himself that here I'm sitting on this chair to teach that filmmaker or teach that writer or teach that director or a producer how to make a film. Mm -hmm. This is not right, that is not right. This should be removed, that should be kept. I have, I have nobody to do that. I'm here to just certify the film in the particular category. So that arrogance of not using one cuss word and using other cuss word, I have, I have no right to do that and I should not do that. And it is at, at a time when a three-year-old child uses mobiles, there is so much of intelligence, there is so much of intellect, the, the entire generation is so good, they know what is right. Every filmmaker knows what is right for the country, what is not right for the country. Let us not doubt the intelligence of a filmmaker, a writer. Okay. They are as intelligent and they are as nationalist, as culturally audit as anybody else sitting on the censor board or, or giving dictates. Okay. They are as important as well, people. Well said and I'm sure many filmmakers would welcome that. But Shabana asked me if you could come in perhaps on the interesting use of the word uh, that as nationalist or uh, they, they know what's good for the country as well as we do. And uh, the, the point uh, Professor Gupta also made about the sovereignty of the, of the country in that sense. When you look at that, uh, with that national, anti-national argument when it comes into the field of censorship. When we talk about self-censorship as well, we saw in the previous uh, government when a cartoonist was arrested at that time for, uh, I think, uh, again, some joking cartoon about some politicians, or when the whole aspect of Section 66A came in to perhaps police exactly this internet, which uh, Ashok Pandit also referred to. Do you find, as technology explodes, as we progress, do you find the tendency to police it even more 
Do you find that amusing? And I remember the days of fire, which perhaps you thought were far behind you, but just last week in a film, a word, the word lesbian was not allowed to be used. So uh, the more things change, the more they remain the same. But let me tell you, in the case of fire, the board of film certification were absolutely splendid. Not only did they pass the film without a single cut, just gave it an adult certificate. After that, when the Shiv Sena decided to pull it out of the theaters, etc., the um, ministry again re-referred the film to the uh, film certification board and they passed it yet again. So that is one instance in which they have really, really come out in fl flying uh, colors. I must absolutely accept that. On the, on the national, anti-national bit, Shabana, that censorship is uh, what's good for our country in a or, sense. You know, national and anti-national are words that are bandied around. I don't think people even seriously understand what it is when they call somebody an anti-national. If you are expressing a view about something that is wrong in your country, you are doing it because you love your country very much and you want that evil uh, to finish. Or you are holding a mirror to society and saying, female feticide is still being practiced in my country. That is a fact. But along with that, what is of tremendous pride for me is the forces of resistance that a democracy allows me. And that's why I feel privileged when I'm in a democracy, because all these things exist, and yet the forces of resistance against them also have free play. And therein lies its strength. 